video games using Kaka Studio X framework. So the first thing that we're going to do is going to Kaka Studio X web page. Here we're going to see the download link and you're just going to download a zip file. And uh, I already downloaded the file. After unzipping the file, you're gonna end up with something like this. So this is the console. Here you can see that I have this folder, Coco Studio X 3.14.1. So this is the latest version. By the time I recorded this video today, it's February of 26, 2017. Okay, so the first thing that you have to do after downloading the file is install the cocos command so in order to do that you will have to run the python script that's called setup.p so in order to run this script you will need python 2.x so right now you can see that i have python 2.7 so let's just run python setup.p and you're going to see that it's going to ask you about some environment variables like ndk root and some other variables that you will need to build the android version of it you can just hit on enter right now we're just going to focus on how to build web application using the javascript capability of this framework so after running this script you can see here that it says that you can run these commands source yada 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 just to make the cocos command available for you so we're just going to copy that and then paste it copy and paste and after that you should be able to run the cocos command as you can see here okay so we're good to go we're ready to create our new project we're just going to type cocos new let's say my game for instance and we're gonna pass some parameters to the cocos command. So for instance, we're gonna say that the package that we're going to use is com.readalto.myname. So for those of you that are familiar with Android applications, what happened is that we have like a unique identifier for our Android applications. So this is what this parameter is about. So it's usually um like three words spread by periods by points as we can see here so we just go with our domain name which is in this case is redelto.com or org which is actually my real domain org.redelto.myname my game cool so what we're going to do now is to specify which programming language we're going to use so we have three choices here Coco Studio X supports C++, Lua, and JavaScript. So in this particular case, we're going to use JavaScript. So minus L, JavaScript. And the last parameter that we're going to pass to the Cocos command is minus D, D as in directory. So we're going to tell the tool where do we want to create a directory to create a template game. So you can choose whatever directory you want to use, but in this particular case, since in the version number two of this tool, you didn't have too much of options. You, you, you had to create them in the projects directory. I'm just gonna stick to it and I'm gonna create it inside the projects directory. So I'm gonna hit enter. It's gonna take you a while. Usually it takes between 10 and 30 minutes, if seconds, sorry, I mean, depending on how fast your computer is. So I'm not gonna pause on this so that you can measure how long will that take to copy Cocos to the X files. But again, as I mentioned, it should be about 15 seconds um, in average. So um, in the meantime, I'm just gonna tell you that uh, the purpose of this video is just to get you started. Well, we're going to see what is created and how to modify it. So we're good to go. So let's go to that folder, it's projects, and inside projects we have uh, the name of the game which is my game in this particular case so my game and here we're going to run the game as it is we're going to run just the template that was created for us so it's cocos run and we're going to specify which platform so in this particular case i'm just going to run the web version of it so you can see that it's opening in the browser so it's just the small game, it's just a black screen with the label that says Hello World and then the logo of the tool. So let's change this, let's make it 
uh, different. Let's make our own thing. So first thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to stop this server and I'm going to use a tool which I like a lot. It's called Brackets, Adobe Brackets. It's a, a tool that Adobe created for editing to, uh, HTML and all sort of games. So I'm going to open the file, file, open folder. I'm going to my project, which is my game. This is it. Open. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go to the apps.js that is inside of the src folder. And um, I'm going to run the project from within this tool. So I'm just going to click here to the lighten button. So you see that it's going to open the Chrome browser and it's going to run for it. The cool thing about this is that this editor, it's going to restart the application whenever it detects that something has changed. So for instance, let's change this text. Instead of hello world, let's say something cool like hello Ray, something like that. <laughs> Ray is my name. So let's see, you see I just saved the file and it automatically reloaded it. It's kind of cool. It's going to speed up your development time. So. If you had two displays like I do, you can just have one display showing your browser and then one display showing your code. That's going to boost your time like a lot. Like literally, it will take about one second to reload the application and you see reflected your changes. It's kind of cool. So let's do cool things. Like right now, this is very static. There's nothing on it. So what we're going to do is that we're going to add some animation, some effects, some movements to it. So the small thing that I'm going to do for now is just that this logo, I'm going to make it move. I'm going to move it, move it from here, original position, it's the center of the screen, to outside of the screen. So what I'm going to tell Cocos to the X is to move this image from here to this point. So we're going to see that by default in the template, he has created an object, it's called size. The size object can tell us the width and the height of the screen. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna get this point. This point is equal to the height, comma, the height of the screen. So if I tell this image to move from its original location to this particular point, we're gonna see the movement from here to here but we're going to see that it's not quite complete, that the uh, image is not going to be out of the screen, but we're going to make some adjustment after that. So for now, we're just going to create a variable for that. So let's say that we're going to have variable. It's going to be called move to, and it's going to be equal to an object of <coughs> cc.move to. And move to function has three parameters. The first one is uh, number of, the number of seconds that the image is going to take for moving from the, its original position to the last position of the destination position. So let's say the, um, it's going to take two seconds. The larger the amount is, the, the slower it's going to be. So let's say for now that's going to take two seconds for the image to take from the original position to this destination. So we're going to pass two more parameters. The second parameter is the X of the final destination. And uh, we already said that the X of the final destination, it's going to be the width of the location. So we've talked about this before. Size is an object that was created here and it's equals to win size. Win size is something that is in, within the, the framework, it's something that's built in. And it's gonna tell us, as it says, the size of the screen. So let's say that uh, the X component of the final destination is equal to the width and the Y component is going to be equal to the height. Okay, so we are good to go. So the last thing we have to do in order to make this work is just to tell the sprite, this one, that it's the object that contains the logo. We're just gonna tell to it, we're gonna call a method, it's called run action and we're gonna pass this parameter, the action that we just created in this line. So we're gonna say run action, move to. Okay, so voila, you can see it moved. Cool, it moved. But <laughs> you can see something, something weird. <laughs> I, was, I, was, <clears throat> I was wondering like, why is the label all image so what happened is that you can see here I, re I wrote 
these dot run actions. So what happened is that when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about the game layer itself. So the complete layer of the game moves. So that's not exactly what I wanted. I just wanted the image, the logo to move. So I just have to put here this dot sprite dot run action. So you see, all the sprite moved. And as I was mentioning before, it's not completely outside of the screen. The reason why it's not outside of the screen is that we have in Cocos TD X a concept that we call the anchor point. So whenever we are positioning an image in the screen, we are just locating, we are positioning that particular anchor point in a particular position of the screen. So since by default that anchor point, it's the center of the image, I located indeed that particular point to the point that I've defined here, the width, comma, the height. You know? So if I wanted the image to go outside of the screen, what I need to do is to change that anchor point. So it, instead of using the center of the image, I want to use, let's say, the point 0, comma, 0 of that particular image. So let's do that. So it's very easy. I'm just going to call the uh, set anchor point method. So that's going to be this dot sprite dot set anchor point. And as I've mentioned, I'm just going to pass two parameters, zero comma zero. And if I save this, voila, you see the image is getting outside of screen. Uh, very cool, isn't it? So uh, we can play a bit more around with it. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff. Um, just want to show how the tool work. There's a lot of code that you can take as reference. Like if you go to the to the folder where you have uh, unzipped file, you can see uh, a lot of tests as they call it. Those are basically just example, sample code that you can use to create your own game. So let's open one randomly. You'll see that they have open demonstration. They have a lot of code that you can use on your games. So. I highly encourage you to use Kyokus TD X. It's a very simple tool. It's totally free. You can create Android games, Windows Phone games, iOS games, web games, everything. So if you already know how to program Lua, JavaScript, or C++, and you want a tool that is completely free, definitely you have to look for this. I do have complete code for more games. You know, that simple like that, but I have like complete games. You can check on that on um, GitHub. You can find my GitHub account here in the description of this video. It's just Google my name, it's Ray Delto, but just um, go to the description of this video. So that's it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and good luck and enjoy coding your Cocos 3 x game. Bye.